Roxo Media House. Three receivers to the left. Miller gets a carry up the middle. No. Duggan rips it away and is sprinting down the right hand sideline. 40, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown. 67 yard sprint. What a fake from Duggan. Who makes the OU defense play? You are in the State of the Frogs, presented by the Railhead Smokehouse with TCU head coach Sonny Dice. And also brought to you by Hub Fort Worth, Old Trapper Beef Jerky. Texas Health Resources, and by Cadillac. Now with the coach, here is the voice of the Frogs, Ryan Estridge. Welcome into State of the Frogs here, episode four, live from Coach Sonny Dykes' office. Horn Frogs coming off that big win over the Oklahoma Sooners on Saturday. Just outside here, Coach, there were a lot of Horn Frogs in purple that were happy, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was a great atmosphere. Uh, student body was awesome. Uh, just, a, just a fun day. Had great weather and uh, it was really fun to get home and play in front of a home crowd, and, and they, the guys did a great job. Everybody was loud, and, you know, really it's important for us to have that home field advantage, and, and I think that's starting to, to happen, and our fans did a great job. Yeah, great numbers in that first half offensively. Obviously, you finished with, uh, you know, just outside the top ten all time as far as uh, individual games are concerned, over 600 yards of total offense. But to me, the defense in this game really kind of set the tone for you. They were aggressive from the start. Yeah, there were. I mean, I think I think starting the way we did, creating that turnover early in the ball game, and then the offense going out and capitalizing on it, I think was really, really important. It's always important to get off to a good start, especially at home when you can build a little bit of momentum mm -hmm. um, and get the crowd involved in the game. And I think that that energy in the stadium really fueled our players and, you know, got them playing hard. And, and you know, you got to give our defense a ton of credit. 16 possessions we had to defend, right. which is a lot of a lot of different possessions. And and thought our guys really played hard. The average amount of time of possession on those 16, though, was about a minute 40. And the average yardage gained was like 22 yards. That tells you a little bit about your defense. Yeah, yeah, they, they really did a good job. I mean, the, going into that game, anytime you play Oklahoma, you got to stop the run. And, and I thought, you know, they had a back that went over 100 yards. But I thought overall we, we did a good job of, of stopping the run for the most part. I thought um, we didn't give up a ton of big plays in the run game. You know, we gave them some, some – Eight to ten yard gains, so we got to stop doing that. But but they didn't break off any real long ones, and you know we made them drive the ball down the field, and and it's, and it's hard to do, especially when you're playing with a backup quarterback and and a little bit banged up like they like they were. So hats off to our defense. Thought they really played well, and and you know I think they're starting to get a little bit more comfortable and play faster every week. I, I know you give Kaz Kazadi a lot of credit for this. This team right now has a ton of confidence. I mean, and they're just kind of displaying that confidence on the field. Yeah, I think so. I think the guys feel good. I mean, I really do. I think they feel good physically. Physically, I think they're in a good place mentally. Um, you know, as you said, I think they're starting to get confidence and, and believe that, um, you know, they can be good. And uh, it's like anything else. You, you've got to – there's a delicate line there that you have to walk all the time between, you know, becoming confident but at the same time making sure that you don't cross the line and have arrogance yeah. and, and make sure that you prepare and you know that, that you're – performance is going to depend on your preparation and I think our guys are starting to figure that out rank 17th in the country now folks starting to pay a little attention to you yeah yeah and it, I told the guys the other day you got to you got to understand those are the same people that picked you seventh in the league yeah. and so uh, we didn't really care about their opinion then so we <laughs> got to do a good job of not caring too much about it now so that's that's kind of the way we got to look at that stuff and you know all that stuff has nothing to do with with you know preparing well and going out and playing and taking care of yourself and all the stuff that we have to do to to give ourselves the chance to play the best that we can on Saturday. And that's what this whole thing is about is, you know, maximizing every single moment during the week, whether it's practice, whether it's, a, you know, looking at extra tape, whether it's a meeting, whether it's going to bed early, whether it's when you sit down and have a meal, what are you eating and how much are you eating, the amount of hydration you get, you know, the recovery time you're getting in the training room. I mean, just all these things add up and, and they allow you to go out there and perform at your very best. With that team success comes individual kudos as well. Max Duggan, the beneficiary of that uh, this week. Walter Camp, Player of the Week. Davey O'Brien's going to have him on the grade eight. I mean, well-deserved, though. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, Max played well Saturday. You know, he continues to play well, continues yeah. to get more and more confidence, and, and um, you know, is doing everything that you want a great quarterback to do is, you know, leading the team, inspiring guys, taking care of the football, making good decisions, distributing it to, to the different playmakers, and, and really starting to get comfortable. All right, let's look at some highlights right now. You talked about the Frogs opening it up early. Get the turnover, uh, which you wanted to do. Oklahoma takes the football. They turn it over, and then uh, Max finds Savion Williams. Again, first scorer of the week uh, of the game, and then early on at least goes to Savion. Yeah, yeah, it was important, I think, to get off to a good start. And, you know, Max made a really nice throw there, threw it where Savion was the only one that could catch it. Savion did a great job of 
of leaning on the defender and giving Max uh, some space to throw the ball and then, and then made a good contested catch. And those are the kind of plays that Savion's got to make, and he's certainly capable of doing that. He's very talented, and it's good to see him make that play. Oklahoma answers with a field goal of their own, and then Duggan's able to find Tate Barber, who had a great day, over 100 yards, third time in his career he's done that. Yeah, yeah, we kind of made a couple of changes, moving some guys around. We wanted to be able to get Tay and Darius on the field at the same time. We felt like we weren't really maximizing their talents, and so we, you know, we moved Tay to, to the small wide position, and it's a good natural position for him. He really played well, and, and again, allow us to get you know, Gunner, Tay, and, uh, and Darius all on the field in, in a significant role. Yeah, we'll hear from Gunner a little bit later on. By the way, I circled that extra point at the time thinking, oh, you hope that doesn't come back to haunt you, the miss there, but it didn't. Yeah, yeah, we were fortunate. I mean, that's, that's the kind of things you can't do. We had a, a couple of mistakes like that. Obviously, can't miss an extra point, especially, you know, as, as you start to get into league play. And then you can't have a couple. We had three penalties, which you can't have. Had a, a two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties and a personal foul. And, you know, that's 45 yards of field position. She can't afford to give up. It kept a drive alive and uh, for them. And, and that's just things that we can't do. Still in the first quarter, still in the opening quarter that took forever. Uh, it felt like Max Duggan takes off for 67, kind of like Amari last week. Nobody was going to catch Max. Yeah, yeah. You know, we knew Max could run. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, good, good track times coming out of high school and all that. Didn't know that he could run that well. So it's good to see our guys playing fast. And I think, again, you mentioned Kaz earlier and his staff, and I think that's a, a big part of, of what we try to do is get them to the game as fast as we can, um, you know, and, and make sure that we work them, that we stay physical, that we're doing all the stuff you have to do. But you got you got to be fresh, and you got to be able to play fast, especially if you are fast. And we felt like that was one of the strengths of this team, and so we want to take advantage of our, our speed and, and make sure that the guys can play as fast as they can. Oklahoma gets in the end zone for the first time with about 2.15 to go in the quarter. And then to me, the next score might have been the biggest one of the game. Message sent late in that uh, first quarter with seven seconds to go in it. You go right back down again with Kendra Miller. Yeah, yeah, you know, getting the run game going is going to be really, really important for us moving forward. Thought, thought our offensive line really played well. Thought those guys played physical. You know, going into that game, we talked at length about, about – you know, the offensive line and the defensive front and how they were both going to have to play tough and hard-nosed. And, and I thought we accomplished that on both sides. But, you know, when we can run the ball, our offense is going to be a whole lot better. And I think what happened to, to Oklahoma a little bit is they tried to get safeties involved in the run game. And then that created some big plays for us uh, in the passing game. Yeah, second quarter action, Amari with a big run, set him up. You rewarded him, let him score from one yard out. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it's good to see him, you know, continue to do what he's done. I and mean, he's really playing well for us. He's a guy that we can count on. And, and is doing a great job running behind his pads. Oklahoma finds the end zone one more time on the ground. And then you mentioned Gunnar Henderson right before uh, the uh, first half comes to an end, the 62-yard strike from Duck. Yeah, yeah, I felt like going into halftime, that was really big to get that yeah. to get that touchdown and, and create a little bit more distance, I think, between the two of us. And, you know, I was really proud of our players. We went into halftime, we had a big lead, and, you know, nobody was celebrating. There was a, it was a different atmosphere than maybe we had the week before. I felt like against SMU we let off the gas a little bit and, and talked at length about not doing that and making sure that that doesn't happen moving forward and if you want to be a great football team you have to go play great all the time you can't take your foot off the accelerator and our guys had the right mentality at halftime everybody came in and said hey look score zero zero second half let's go win the second half coach you look at these numbers these are just big play after big play happening Tay Barber with the 73 yarder Duggan runs for 67 Amari had the big run then able to punch it in Gunner from 62 yards and then in the third quarter Kendra gets a 69 yarder yeah I mean it's yeah. big play after big play it was again I think you gotta you gotta credit our players for, for playing fast and being fast and, and you know and, and we're trying to manage them to make sure that they can you know play as fast as they can and it all again begins up front and you know, I thought our wide receivers blocked well for the most part down the field uh, Saturday and that enabled us to get some big runs. And, and our backs are really running well. And those guys are, are fast, you know, and when they get in the open field, it's going to be hard to catch them. Max scores again in the third quarter. Oklahoma punches one in in the fourth. That was all the scoring, 55-24 on the day going into, into this one. If I'd have told you that was going to be ca the case, you'd have taken it without playing it, right? I mean, you didn't see that coming. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, I felt like um, we had an opportunity to play well. Um, you know, our guys uh, were improving, and you could see it in practice. I mean, I think the preparation going into that game was as good as I've seen, certainly, um, from this team. And, um, you know, we had a lot of confidence. I think at the end of the day, that's really, really important. And, and a big part of playing Oklahoma is just getting over the fact they got Oklahoma on the front of their jersey. And, yeah. and you know, I didn't hear much talk about that. I didn't hear any talk about, you know, the last 
14 or 15 games, whatever it was, against Oklahoma. And, you know, we'd only beat them once in the Big 12 and all that. I, I never really heard any of that. I think our guys saw it as an opportunity to go out and play well and, and um, was proud of the way they performed. Boy, did they ever perform on Saturday. Frogs uh, take down Oklahoma. Now turn their attention to Kansas coming up. Uh, that one happens on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock in Lawrence. We'll preview that one a little bit later on with the head coaches. We continue with more here. Stay to the Frogs, live from Coach Dykes' office here from Frogs Today. The Hub Fort Worth family is a passionate, energetic team of insurance professionals that have the same common goal in mind, helping businesses and individuals protect their health, property, and financial well-being. Their objective is to maximize the options available to businesses, families, and individuals while helping you make the choices that suit each unique situation and challenge. Their clients look to them for guidance in navigating the cumbersome world of insurance and investments. Their experience and personal relationships combined with their creativity enables them to craft solutions that fit your specific circumstances. Their guiding principle is, don't tell me how much you know, just show me how much you care. Since their founding in 1966, they've enhanced their offerings to include a comprehensive range of services, including employee benefits, property and casualty, and personal lines insurance. Follow them and learn more on their social media pages. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Hub Fort Worth. Old Trapper Beats, oh, one cool. upping. <laughs> I'm a big old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? For exclusive interviews and content on TC Recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime it's your source for all things tcu only on frogstoday.com say to the frogs continues with our what's your beef question of the week thanks to our friends at old trapper for bringing that to us every week here's your question coach from brady jones uh my name is brady jones i'm from plainfield illinois and i want to know what's your favorite spot on tcu's campus all right good question from brady i mean you, you don't get a chance to go to a lot of places on campus what is the favorite yeah, you know, I'm going to have to say Eamon Carter Stadium. Uh, right here is hard to beat. Uh, lucky I got a great office and, and uh, some people came and decorated it for me. Thank goodness. Uh, so I enjoy, enjoy being here. If not, I certainly don't mind walking over and grabbing a Chick-fil-A sandwich sometimes <laughs> on go. campus and, and seeing some of the students over there. But it's, um, it's a beautiful campus. And um, it, my wife and I will go walk around, you know, uh, a campus sometimes when we have some time. And, and we really enjoy getting out and and seeing everything. I'm still learning my way around. I've seen you courtside in basketball, too, for Jamie Dixon's uh, program as well. Yeah, yeah, we love going to everything, yeah. baseball, basketball, anything. We'll, I'm looking forward to taking my daughter to a volleyball game here soon, and so um, we, we just love being on campus and supporting right. everybody. Good deal. A lot of fun places here at TCU. That's your What's Your Beef question of the week. Thank you, Brady. Old Trapper Beef. Oh, One cool. upping. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest I'm fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event-based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Texas based Happy Water offers the best tasting sugar free kids drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. 
Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase happy water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. Time for our one play breakdown here on State of the Frogs with the head coach, Sonny Dykes. Joining us back in the Flying Tea Club studios is Coach David Bowden. Uh, there was a play here in the first half where Kendra Miller, coach, scores from 15 yards out. Well, this thing looked like it was executed by that offensive line perfectly. Yes, uh, it was blocked great on Saturday. Certainly not a new play. If you go back, uh, Joe Gibbs and those Redskin teams are running counter tray. Same idea, except... Uh, they had somebody on the backside to block this one, and, and really it, it became uh, really popular, the GT counter in the Big 12 with Lincoln Riley and those teams. As soon as people started setting this 4i here on the backside of zone, they couldn't get zone blocked. They couldn't get this guy blocked in zone because, you know, they couldn't cut him off. He already had leverage to start uh, pre-snap. And so Iowa State was doing that a lot of times, and that was Oklahoma's answer. And so it was kind of used against them. It was uh, Lincoln Riley made that famous as he modernizes and just read the end. And of course, Garrett Riley being here as the offensive coordinator, uh, this is part of his repertoire as well. And so we saw uh, Steve Avila pull and then uh, to kick out a, a cornerback, never good. You never want to see your corner setting the edge, that's for sure. Um, in, in the past, they have spilled this. So we've seen teams spill this. And what that means is they try to blow that up and then get vertical and everything bounces to the outside. They choose to box it here, okay, and force everything back in because they don't have an overhang outside. So there's no one to bounce it to. They, there's no one to spill it to. Um, so you see a, a kick out here. And it, from there, it's just going to create a wall here. It's down, 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 pull around. And, uh, and it creates a massive hole for Kendra Miller. And he doesn't need much, as we know. And so the, uh, Jared Wiley does a great job bumping this one over, picking this linebacker up. We got a puller on the corner. Puller ends up on the safety. And then, of course, Kendra Miller just does the rest with really tough running, Brian. A couple of guys get hung up there in the middle. Give me some sense as to what's happening on that one. That's right. You know, what happens here is Oklahoma actually takes himself out of the play. It looked like there was initially some kind of cross blitz. And so you saw this linebacker working this way. This one was about to come over the top. But they, they did a really nice job actually getting two offensive players to block three defenders, uh, three sooner defenders. And so what happens is Jared Wiley, when he bumps this one over, He's able to create that wall. This player takes himself out of the play. It's picking up by the right guard. We're now able to wall this one off. And then from here, we're able to now, the second puller, we talked about the first one on the corner. Instead of going to the linebacker, he's already walled off. We end up going up onto this safety here. And so now you've got a puller on the corner, a puller on the safety. Anytime you know that your offensive line is blocking the secondary, Something's good going to happen for the Frogs, and they certainly hit the horn on this one. All right, a play there that you had been tracking for a while, I know, Coach Bowden. Thanks for that insight. Coming up, we got more with the head coach, Sonny Dykes. He's going to be by to preview Kansas when we continue with State of the Frogs next after this timeout. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain, refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. Old Trapper Beats. Oh, one go. upping. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest I'm fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? The official beef jerky of the Big 12. Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? 
Welcome back into State of the Frogs now with the head coach, Sonny Dykes. Turn our attention to Kansas this week at 11 o'clock. Game day is going to be there. Always a big deal. Frogs are 6-1 and one when game day's around. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. Let's make sure it's 7-1. and one. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the goal. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a great reward for our players and, and certainly a reward for Kansas uh, with the start they're off to. And, you know, they, they got a very good football team. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that when you look at them, you just see a winning formula. You see them um, taking care of the ball on offense. Uh, very, very seldom turn the ball over. Really good quarterback play, a threat to run the ball, which is always tough on defenses. And then, you know, they're they're not giving up many big plays on defense. They're making you drive it down the field. Uh, really do a good job of getting lined up. And the thing that stands out when you watch them is just their effort. They're playing incredibly hard. Um, you know, they're doing all the things that you would expect um, a Lance Leopold team to do. I mean, he's a really good football coach. He's been successful everywhere he's been. And um, you know, and they're they're playing like I said, winning football. Coach uh, David Bowden gave me a number earlier that I had to go back and double check, and I'm going to get it wrong again now. That his record at Wisconsin Whitewater was like 114 and six. Yeah, Is that it was, right? It was a lot of wins and not many losses. <laughs> I don't know crazy. exactly what it was, but it was a lot. It was and crazy. Yeah, they, I think they won six national championships yeah. or something while he was there. And um, really good football coach. I really like him. Just a good guy, good person. You can see why. Uh, the players play hard for him. You know, I think he's one of those guys that uh, it's a player first uh, organization. He really takes care of the players, and and I think they appreciate uh, the way he works with them and interacts with them. And I think they're going to play hard. I mean, that's just what they do. Quarterback makes him go offensively. Jalen Daniels, the guy that they they've sort of you know let him come up through the ranks. He's homegrown essentially, right? Yeah, he is. He's guy's been around for a while and just continues to play better and better and better and improve and. As I said earlier, really has a clear understanding of what they're trying to do offensively, executes the offense well, and doesn't take a lot of risks, you know, and, and really takes care of the ball. And, you know, they're one of those teams that uh, they're going to do a bunch of different stuff in the run game. They're going to be really creative in things that they do. A lot of pullers, a lot of people uh, getting out in front. Um, and then the quarterback can pull it down and run it. And he's, you know, one of the top quarterbacks when you look at quarterback rating in all of college football. So they're generating big plays from the throwing game, but it all begins with them running the ball. Yeah, Max Duggan at the top of that number. And whenever you figure out how that number is contrived, I want you to help me. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's a lot of a lot of numbers and metrics and stuff <laughs> right. in that, but uh, that's kind of way over my head. <laughs> it's 16 rushing touchdowns already on the year uh, for this Kansas team. So shows the priority is to run the football, and as you said, they get creative in that game. Yeah, they do. They do a nice job. They scheme the heck out of you. They're yeah. going to – um, as I said, you know, un uncovered linemen are going to pull, and they do a nice job getting guys in front of you. They do a great job of angle blocking up front. Um, you know, they're able to hold blocks. Uh, they're not the biggest offensive line mm -hmm. in college football, but they're very athletic. Um, you know, they're strong, and they do a really nice job position blocking people. You know, I had a, a, a coach tell me that they're, what they're doing on the offensive line is similar to what Air Force does, uh, and, and it can give you all kinds of trouble. Yeah, yeah, very similar. I think it's it's not really an, an option approach, mm -hmm. but it's the, the way they do a lot of different things. It, it puts uh, certain defensive players in conflict, yeah. and they've got to – Decided they're going to do this. If you do this, they do this. And they seem like they're always one step ahead in the run game. And they've tried to get more athletic defensively. He said that was a priority for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you look at their players on defense. They're long. They're athletic, uh, particularly in the secondary. You know, the corners are big guys, uh, rangy. Uh, the safeties can run and tackle. Um, you know, linebackers are very, very active. And then the front, I really like the front. They play hard. They're aggressive. Uh, they do a good job pushing, you know, with the pass rush with those inside guys, and they have some speed on the outside. All right, what are you telling your guys? I mean, this week, obviously, folks are going to have a lot of focus on this game with two top 20 teams meeting in Lawrence. you got game day there. you got all that going on. They've been pretty good at keeping the noise to the side, though, this year. Yeah, yeah, I think this will be a big challenge for us from that perspective. I, you know, I talked to the guys the other day and just said, look, just focus on doing your job and mm -hmm. controlling what you can control. And I think that's going to be the big thing for us is, you know, not not worry about any of that. Um, you know, we all have a job to do. I think it's good sometimes to go play on the road because, you know, it just seems like there's less people, less distractions, all that. And so, you know, I think our guys need to have a great week of preparation. We need to have great practices on Tuesday and Wednesday and, you know, a great walk through Thursday, run through Friday. And then we've got to do a good job of, of making sure we're doing the little things right, getting them out of the right amount of sleep and eating and hydrating and all those type of things that we can do to, to make sure we can play our best. Years passed in Lawrence, strange things always seem to happen there. And special teams come into play every year, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know TCU and the history with Kansas. I mean, the games have been tight historically. Uh, it seems like that that's always been a tough place to go play and win. Yeah, I know it has historically. And I think that – you know, they're certainly playing well at home. They're playing well on the road. They're going to have a great crowd that's going to be into it. So it should be a, a, a great college football game and exactly what 
uh, guys want to play in. I mean, I, we talk about it all the time, but you want to play in meaningful games in October and November, and, and here's one, so let's go see what we can do. All right, best of luck with it. Okay, thanks so much. There he goes. It. All right, Sonny Dykes, the head coach here with State of the Frogs. We'll get ready now uh, for the Horn Frogs to take on the Kansas Jayhawks at 11 o'clock. Back with you next week with highlights of that matchup. For the head coach, I'm Brian Estridge. Thanks for joining us this week on State of the Frogs. Roxo Media House.